<laughs> right now, True TV presents World's Dumbest Competitions. <laughs> 20 contests, including professional eggnoggin. <laughs> Bicycle soccer in Bavaria. Heidi Ass backwards racing in New York Central Park. Be careful, please. And oh. a fierce custard pie tossing in England. Here we are. Boom. Take that. Oh. The only winner in these games is stupidity itself. Ooh. Ooh. Featuring the unsportsmanlike conduct of our celebrity panel. Change the name to Hot Drunk Chicks Wrestling in Mud. And now you got yourself a sport. It's True TV presents World's Dumbest Competition. <laughs> Poker is traditionally a serious game played for high stakes. Yeah, give me two cards, I'll raise you $500. Surprisingly, the highest stakes poker is not in Reno, Vegas, or Macau. It's at the Rodeo in Mexico. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. You into poker? Yeah? You into, uh, Mexican poker? Oh, well. We uh, actually play in the middle of a bull ring, unleash an angry bull, and the last guy up wins. I'll see your two pair and raise you a pair of horns in your spleen. Those guys had to be drunk. There's no way they could be sober. Anymore. No, nobody in their right mind is gonna sit out there and act like they're playing poker with a damn bull running around. There. That just ain't right. I want to try it. Put me in Bonaduce. Come on, Bonaduce. Mexican poker, you and me. I have better things to do with my time. I want to try it. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Really, if you are the winner of the Mexican poker game, what does that mean? I don't know, spend the next three weeks in a coma. That's your prize. The last man sitting at the table wins the whole pot, about $500. But he is able to walk away in one piece. Some guys will have poker night at any cost. <laughs> In England, competitors are preparing for a decidedly non-lethal game of Russian roulette. Pick your egg. Take some boiled eggs, five. One raw egg, make six. Crush them against your head. If you get yolk on your face, then guess what? You lost. <laughs> One, two, three. Eat your one, two, three. Yeah! <laughs> oh, he loses. What the f is that? Who comes up with these competitions? <laughs> it's so anticlimactic because it's it's like a little egg. So oh wow, a little, and they're all like, wow! <laughs> oh. Dead chicken stuff on you. The only way to win this game, don't play. The player with the least amount of egg on his face receives a tiny, shiny trophy. This wasn't quite as edgy as the same scenes in Deer Hunter. You can do it, Stevie! You can do it! You can do it! It's the last day of ski season at Colorado's Winter Park Resort. Skiers line up to go on one final special run called the Spring Splash. What's so special about it? This. Spring Splash, this should be called Crazy Splash. <laughs> they go skiing down a mountain into a puddle of ice, water. That's brilliant. The goal is to be the skier with the fastest time across the water. That is, if you can make it across the water. 
It was kind of like, what's the fastest way I can get frostbite on my genitals? I'm not a big fan of being cold. I'm not a big fan of being wet. In other words, I hate this game. The winner skis off with a cool grand and mostly dry clothing. Snow sports are stupid. You're not supposed to be outside in the cold. Go inside, light a fire, crack a beer. That's what you're supposed to do in the winter. Coming up, Germans, bicycles, and big balls. Volkswagen. Schwarzenegger. Plus, the running of the 112th Ass Derby in Italy. And later, the unforgettable yeah. medieval shin-kicking tournament. Yeah. Plus, more from our celebrity panel. Getting down in the mud and, you know, that's fun stuff. <laughs> Soccer is one of the most exciting and popular sports in the world. And competitive cycling isn't too far behind. But when you put the two together, well, it's just kind of silly. Backwards, sideways, hitting it, jumping it, kicking it, and they're using a, you know, a bicycle. Believe it or not, cycle ball has been around since 1893. And we have the Germans to thank for it. Sauerkraut, Wiener Schnitzel, Volkswagen, Schwarzenegger. Leave it to Germany again. They're out Germaning themselves now. Heidi Klum, Audi, Toberfest. We're going to figure out how to like play soccer with a bicycle. Schultz, you want a soccer ball? What the hell? Calm down with the beer over there, for <laughs> sakes. I want to be a soccer ball. I'm going to cycle ball, dude. How do you block a ball when you're on a bike? I can barely not get hit by a car when I'm on a bike. What's a goalie supposed to do? Block it with his horn? Claudia Schiffer! Mercedes Benz! Bravo, you guys. You got a boring hobby, but you're great at it. If they were smart, they would get this game in the Olympics because they're the only ones who can play it. Frankenstein! How much do you want to make a bet that becomes like a big sport in the United States? Just from this show. Forty years ago, in an old English pub, two wankers came up with a plan to raise some money. Oi, come here. I've got a plan. Bake a whole bunch of custard pies and charge people to throw them at each other. <laughs> that stroke of genius has evolved into the annual World Pie Throwing Competition. Ready, ready, oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hello, here comes another. Have another, you punks. Here we are. Oh. Oh, no. Cream oh. your face. Oh. Pie. Oh. Oof. Oh. Like that. Oh. Oh. I want to be part of this, but I would be eating the pies. Oh. Hey! Oh. Why waste a good customer? Come on. Oh. What's the thing? Is there nothing else going on there? This is what happens when you have only three TV stations and crappy food. Judge, there's just a trick pie each. It's just a way for guys to get girls covered in something that might be even slightly sexual. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Oh, custard. I went to the video store the other day. And I rented a movie called The Custard Toss, and then I saw this clip. This is not the same porn. With the help of a complicated scoring system... Six points were directed. <gasps> Three points from the shoulders upwards. Shoulders down with the one point. Winners are chosen and receive a custard-covered trophy. Never won anything in my life. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so good. I'm strange as <laughs> I'm sorry, it is his. It's really weird. That's a competition that I don't know if I want to be a part of. That's gross. <laughs> that really is. But we'll be back next year. <laughs> For 
hundreds of years, the Festival of St. Joseph in Italy has brought neighboring towns together for three days of high-spirited celebration. But it's the final event of the festival, an epic test of will and endurance that spectators are most excited about. I mean, I knew horse racing wasn't popular in Italy, but really, you're just gonna jump on a donkey? It's a donkey. We need to send some more sports to these third world countries. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Italy. I'm sorry, sorry. Donkeys don't even look like they bend their legs, do they, when they run? They're just kind of straight-legged animals and small, hating their life. I don't know, man. You know, these poor donkeys, these beasts of burden, these poor, wonderful little donkeys. Forte, donkey! Forte! 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 Donkeys don't want to run. They're like, running around. He's like, what the f am I doing here? Why are we running? Stop hitting me, dude. Stop hitting me. Slap that ass. Rigatoni. Rigatoni. Slap the ass. Slap it. Slap the ass. Good. Slap the ass. The dog is going a half, what, an eighth of a mile an hour? Just boring as shit. My people really get back into the organized crime business. There is a winner, eventually. And his prize is a large painted canvas of St. Joseph, astride an ass. They take that sport very, very seriously. But I bet you the ones that, you know, fall off and don't win and stuff like that probably feel like a, you know, big jackass. We move from Italy to New York City for a competition that has some striking similarities. Athletes from around the world are gathered at the starting line of a one-mile race, and all eyes are focused in rear-view mirrors. Runners on your mark. Be careful, please. Please be careful. It's the New York City Backwards Mile, where runners have raced in reverse every April Fool's Day since 1987. Never have I seen so many rear ends coming towards you. Man, that's bass backwards. <laughs> Get it? I could do this. It's slow. It's really kind of creepy. It feels like you're watching a forward race on reverse, backwards. Very disturbing. If I want to watch people backpedaling, I'll watch the Detroit Lions defense on Thanksgiving Day. How do you even hand them water? Do you just hit them in the back of the head with the water, or as they go past backwards, do you just throw it at their mouth? There are some folks who even use mirrors, and I don't know whether that should be allowed. That might be cheating. But what they should have done was put some obstacles in the way. That would have been a hell of a race. So what did the winner of the backwards race receive? A one-year gym membership and a whole lot of good exercise. It's the best form of exercise because you develop in a whole set of muscles you don't normally use, which is the backwards. Because when you run forward, you develop your hands, but you develop your quad. Instead of building up your hands, you build up your quads. Well, that's great. What are you, barrel jumping next weekend? Who cares if you build up your quads? But more people should do it. They should just get beyond the goofiness and do it because it's a fantastic exercise. What a And we're out. Coming up. Determined dreamers take flight. Plus, a musical armpit competition. And later, a little bit of this. When the world's dumbest competitions continues. Athens, Greece. Eager spectators gather to watch highly trained athletes compete in the Olympic Games. By Zeus! Athens, Texas. Eager spectators gather to watch... Redneck Olympics. <laughs> this is just 
just a tremendous event for all rednecks. I mean, but these guys do it every year, and they are darn proud of this whole operation. It's like the county fair with beer cans. There's a lot of suspenders with no shirts on, and a lot of sleeveless shirts, and a lot of women wearing things way too small, and they're way too big. They really know how to have a good time. They're incredible, the way they love to have fun and play really intelligent games. He makes his mama proud, don't he? That little fat one should weird. Look at some sound of his, don't he? Armpit farting is a relatively new sport. It lacks the proud legacy of bobbing for pig's feet. I know when I go to the state fair, my biggest goal is, hey, let's get dysentery. <laughs> what the hell is that? Here you go. One of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. And when you look like this, it's very hard to get old Bigfoot to stay in your mouth. That's all there is to it. They even have an Olympic redneck size pool. We call it a mud puddle. They call it a pool. Yahoo! -y! <laughs> the Redneck Olympics is a good example of why not everybody should just automatically be allowed to vote or own guns or a driver's license. We, we done it again. We, we, we came, we saw, and it's time to go home. Braving the rain and cold, spectators in Essex, England, line the banks of the Blackwater River. They've come to watch competitors race across it. There's just one catch. The Blackwater is a river of mud. This is the annual Malden Mud Race. A mud race of no five-year-olds? Shame on them. Getting down in the mud and, you know, that's fun stuff. <laughs> what is fun about getting dirt all over your body, in your ears, in your nose, in your eye, in your mouth? Ew! I felt like I was watching a National Geographic special on a herd of morons being chased into a river by, like, a lion. With the lion in pursuit, the herd of morons rushes into the Blackwater mud swamp. People were dressing up in costumes. They're dressing up as different characters. People were dressed up in tuxedos. Some people are just in shorts and a t-shirt. Did anybody else see the fireman in the thong? <laughs> Doesn't make me feel safe about living in that town. Some people are taking it seriously. <laughs> I've got this. Like, this is a competitive sport instead of just a bunch of idiots. One guy walked across. It was like Jesus. He didn't even break a sweat. I'm the winner. Hello. The sad part is, is they really feel like they have accomplished something at the end of this. The race isn't over until the last filthy person makes it out alive. Oh, bugger. Where are the showers? And at the end of the day, you look back on the event, I mean, really, you got mud in places you don't want mud. I just hope all these people had their tetanus shots afterwards. It's a normal day out, really, honestly. It's a With normal a day out in England. We stay in England for number 11 and head to the seaside resort of Bogner Regis, where thousands of people have gathered to watch the annual Birdman of Bogner competition. Contestants suit up in a variety of outfits, toting high-tech equipment and safety gear to see who can do the best imitation of something that can fly. The International Bogmar Birdman should tell you right away. That's a lot of words for, hey, we're stupid and wet. Here it is. Oh, very good. You can't use any mechanical thing. You have to literally fly. I hope the wind dies down so I can extend my wings all the way, you know? I don't know if you know this, but human beings cannot fly. Here it goes. Okay. The theme song should be R. Kelly's I Believe I Can Fly. No, you can't. Shuffling to 
boards very gingerly. There he goes. And he's a floater. I think it was really said best when the guy jumped off the bridge in a toilet. The contest is crap. Despite the outfits, these birdmen take the competition seriously. Some even too seriously. I don't understand why there's a hang glider in this competition. Oh, what a shock. A hang glider can fly without a motor. There's always one killjoy at the party. One guy who shows up way too friggin' serious. I've got a new uh, modification, a uh, giant strap to hold the wing ends down. And this guy shows up like, no, I actually aerodynamically designed this so that I'm gonna fly and beat the world record. Nobody likes you, dude. Go home. The person who flies the farthest from the pier goes home with $60,000. And of course, the Birdman of Bogner title. It's England. Land of Shakespeare, land of people who jump off of piers in bird costumes. That's what you get when you get aviation technology and alcohol together. Oh, there it is. There it goes. Yeah, that sounded painful, didn't it? In the tundra of Oulu, Finland, a crew cuts through the thick ice covering a lake to create a 25 meter long pool of freezing water. When the temperature peaks at three degrees Fahrenheit, the contestants emerge from their barracks to compete in the international championships of ice swimming. This is some cold ass I was shriveling up as soon as I started watching it. As a general rule, people, ice is God's way of saying no swimming. The person not to freeze to death first wins. <gasps> this is what happens when you live in a place that's very, very cold for a very long time. You get something called ice dementia. Look it up. Did anyone notice besides myself that there was not one thin person in this competition? The old man at the end when he's walking out with a smile on his face. When he started the race, he was 25. Fantastic! I wore these clothes so I couldn't see what I was doing. Once all the races are over and the winners are announced, these proud polar bears treat themselves to a nice long soak in a hot tub. <gasps> Here is my advice to the Finnish people. When you're bored and you feel like cutting a hole in the ice and making them a swimming pool so that you can shrink up your junk to an unrecognizable state, do what the Russians do. Get drunk. If I want to see old people shivering, I'll put my grandparents in the car driving by the cemetery twice. The Finlands are tough. The Finnish. Oh, the Finnish, sorry. Finlands. <laughs> Coming up, racing latrines in Colorado. <laughs> Plus, championship toe wrestling. And later, Wimbledon's dirty little secret. How's that then? When the world's dumbest competitions continues. In the Colorado mining days of the 1880s, outhouses were a part of everyday life. <laughs> Some good beetles, Martha. What better way to celebrate that time period than to race those outhouses down the street during the Leadville Boom Days Festival in Colorado? Outhouse races. <laughs> Come on. You guys are bored. There are third world countries where they would love an outhouse, and we're racing them down the street just to piss off the world. There was a person in the outhouse. Like it was in use while the race was going on. I think you get extra points if the person in the outhouse actually takes a dump in there during the race. Do you lose if he doesn't drop a deuce by the time you get to the finish line? I mean, that's some peer pressure there. I need more time, more time. I got nothing, nothing. That's the worst case of the runs I ever saw. I think it's the only race where even when you're number one, you're still number two. And the winner of the race gets indoor plumbing. Everybody run! 
fact, the winners of the outhouse race don't get a thing. Just the satisfaction of a job well done. It's just another example of white people with too much time on their hands, which has never been a good thing for this country, ever. Some things are just really dumb, and that's outhouse racing. Get a job, get a life. It's not that exciting. Every year in Northern California, there's an art competition called the Kinetic Grand Championship. Artists from all over show up in extravagant costumes, toting giant kinetic or movable sculptures. What you see behind me is our amazing one-eyed wonder worm. It's our attempt to answer the age-old question, what you got hiding under your kilt, laddie? The goal is to see who can come up with the most outlandish creation. And then, go kinetic boaters! Race it across the river. Go Flamingo! <laughs> Boat. Is regular boating not doing it for you? Would you rather dress a boat up and paddle around? Is that, is that more exciting for you? Good. Way to use your imagination. LaCraft is the big wiener, and we are the wieners. You know how you get across a river? You drive over the river. This is in 1842. Put down the copy of Huck Finn, you freak. Here you have these really nerdy people who can get together with other nerdy people to do something that's really nerdy. Can you imagine guys spending hours and hours crafting these bizarre structures, these art movements? And we don't care. That's not art. I've been to a museum. No one's in a cardboard paddle boat in shorts and a ponytail. <laughs> but. I have to admit that I gave points to the Baywatch team because they did look pretty good. Yeah, all the costumes, yes, big yada yada. Just keep the camera on the hotties in the mud. That's all that counts. Change the name to Hot Drunk Chicks Wrestling in Mud. And now you got yourself a sport. The sculpture with the fastest time across the river wins a recycled metal trophy. That's time well spent, huh? Decorating your boat. I want to have kids with you someday. Because you look smart. Good. Freud once said that men grow beards to hide something. What are you hiding about your mother? But these men have grown their whiskers to show them off at the World Beard and Mustache Championship in Brighton, England. Certainly genetics involved. You have to just be able to grow the hair on your upper lip. Cheers. I feel itchy. Did you see the guy with the three handlebar mustaches? Perfectly waxed. It's like, it was actually beautiful. There's the giant handlebar, the tightly curled handlebar, the I've been caught in the wind, my handlebar is straight handlebar. And then every once in a while, you see some dude who's just like, I just don't like shaving. And why do they all dress up like the Ricola dude? <laughs> like, do you have to look like you live in the Bavarian Alps just because you have a long beard? And not one single guy wearing a t-shirt that says mustache rides, $5. My wife coifs me, uh, so I like to say my wife does me every morning. I really thought about entering. I was thinking about going with the Longhorn or, or the Snidely Whiplash or just the full-on Grizzly Adams, you know, the full <laughs> you know, which is no effort at all. Those with the best facial hair win honorary tankards and an invitation to rejoin the 21st century. Losers! I expected them to just be like, do you like my beard? I'm about to drive away now on a giant bicycle where the front wheel is much bigger than the back. Bully! Handlebar! Wrestling has many variations. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> arm. <laughs> sumo. Hoyosoko. And in Fenny Bentley, England, they've come up with yet another. They got their big toes locked into each other, and whoever can twist the other person's foot to the other side wins. Who comes up with that? Oh, 
kick your ass with this toe, dude. Don't make me get you. I'll get your ass with this toe. Let's go now, man. Come on, you. No. So. Ugh. It was kind of gross, too. Everybody touching their feet and stuff together. Ugh. What I'm looking for is a good bowl toe, plenty of muscle, and, uh, well, hygiene. Dude, that one was fired up. You gotta be drunk. You're living in England and toe wrestling. Still had a grip of his toe. He was trying to flick out. I still had a grip. I won. I just want to tell you that I just am like, okay, dude. I don't approve of any sport where you can drink. It's not a sport. Bowling's not a sport. Because you can be faced in 300 pounds. Toe wrestling is not a sport. <laughs> The Toe Champ receives a year's supply of ice cream. Makes about as much sense as toe wrestling itself. Uh, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Coming up, more insane competition on the slopes. Plus, we'll tell you all about gurney. Let's just hope they've got good personalities when the world's dumbest competitions continues. Wimbledon, England is known the world over for hosting one of the great annual sporting events. 40 love. But did you know that it also hosts one of the dumbest? And it's Boone Swaddle in the lead. The World Banger Racing Finals. Oh, Hello. How's that then? Here we are. The intent to this is to get across the finish line with as much crap done to your vehicle as possible. Excuse me, mate. So this is sort of real bumper cars, but there's no bumpers, and they're real cars. Hello, chap. It's what NASCAR would be if NASCAR wasn't a bunch of pussies. Pardon me. That actually looks very fun. What's that then? Go, blimey! Drive around this right into people and keep going. Eat it! Like that, do you? Ha <laughs> gotcha, bitch! Stinky kidney pie! This is why they don't have as much road rage in England. Hello! They get it out. It's sort of therapeutic. Hello, chap! How's that then? There is a winner, but nobody really cares who it is. These guys have boiled racing down to its core essence. Who cares about the race? I want to see a crash. You go to a NASCAR race two and a half hours watching people go in circles praying somebody hits somebody. That's pretty much your whole day. And beer. On the Gulf Coast in Alabama, the beaches are always packed. The beer is always flowing. The ladies are mostly in bikinis. And every April, a sporting contest is held. On the sun-baked proving grounds, the contestants are geared up and ready to compete in a challenge of completely unknown origin. Throwing fish. OK, here we go. This is really great. For anybody who doesn't know what a mullet toss is, it is taking fish and tossing them as far as you possibly can. It's not gross to me. At first, I thought we were going to be tossing actually people with mullets, like throwing Billy Ray Cyrus into a brick wall. <clears throat> that sounds fun, doesn't it? Just throwing the fish, and whoever throws the fish the furthest is the winner. Fun. And why do they do this? Why not? <laughs> this is the BBBMT. Broads, boobs, butts, mullet toss, baby, yeah! The first time I throw when the fish is hard, I throw it when it's hard. Uh, shut up, y'all. What would make you want to throw a fish, man? I thought you were supposed to eat fish. You know, you don't see black folks having, you know, chicken toss. I am a mullet toss hoochie mama.
Welcome to the Steamboat Springs Cardboard Classic in Colorado, where people from all over have worked for months creating elaborate sculptures from cardboard, tape, string, and glue. Hey, they got everything there. Contestants are judged on construction, costumes, team style, and whether their creation can survive a trip down the mountain. <laughs> This was basically dudes in their basement with a case of Miller High Life building a giant cardboard structure to throw themselves down a hill in it. So uh, paper mache and cardboard weighs about, oh, 300 pounds. What's the matter, Dungeons and Dragons uh, not doing it for you anymore? Routine Latrine! You work months and months and toil and create a, a sled and then it gets destroyed. That's a lot of labor to put into something that's only going to use once. And what do the winners get for all their hard work? One ski pass, which you can probably purchase for less than the cost of materials. Thank God finally someone found a sport that we can use paper mache in. It's a nerd fest, but they were very creative, and uh, good luck to them. I hope they all die of paper cuts. In Cumbria, England, an audience has gathered to witness the World Gurning Championship, a 700-year-old tradition that has its origins in medieval traveling sideshows. Yeah, gurning's kind of frightening. Gurning's really frightening. Wearing a horse collar known as a braffin, Contestants battle to see who can make the most impressive facial distortion. Why you gotta put a horse collar on ugly people? Haven't they suffered enough? Some people have a face that makes horses rear up. <laughs> if you have one of those faces, then you should be in that competition. My mama used to say, if you hold your face that way, it'll stick. How's this? Hi, I'm Eddie. Hi. Thank God this takes place in England, because really the, the best people at this have no teeth. I like to do it without the teeth. <laughs> hey, Eddie, every now and again, we like it when you do it with your teeth out. Oh, is that just me? One woman and one man are awarded the title of world's best gurner, causing their mothers to feel vindicated if only for the day. I'm the winner! And I like to also call this competition uh, not just the gurning competition, but who I'll go home with at last call competition. Coming up, 19 boneheaded battles down. Only one to go. Find out what tops the list when the world's dumbest competitions continues. Our dumbest competition comes from where else? England, where another small town is holding another medieval-themed festival, filled with competitions like masked sack races, water bucket runs, and wooden sword duels. It's Renaissance Fair crap. It's the kind of people who eat giant turkey legs and do maypole dancing. Good for you. But there is one contest that sets this little festival apart from all the rest. And it hurts. What? What is wrong with these people? Who thought of, uh, I'm going to kick you in the shin? And that's the competition. What do you want to do today? I don't know. Let's kick each other in the shins out of frustration. Look at how your shin kicked, it hurts. You know, that's not fun. 
Like these guys make our jackass people look like Stephen Hawking. I don't think so. When you're ready, kick! The rules of this are kick the other jerk in the shins and, and knock him down. They ended up taking each other down with a... It's how you get fat girls in bed in college. You have to give them the... Remember? The ankle behind the ankle, then you get, get the... It's all leverage. And what is the prize from the shin-kicking competition? Do you get to finally move out of your parents' basement? Maybe you get to kiss a girl. Yeah. Oh, hello. I'm curious. You've sparked my interest, mate. Only in English. I mean, I love England, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Go! What are we doing? World's dumbest competitions. Great. Looking yeah. forward to it. So how do you come up with this Have you ever done this? Yeah. No. Wait a minute. Oh, here's the other thing, though. I don't want to start any trouble or say anything that could be construed as aggressive. What the f That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> It's so much fun. This is why other countries hate us. So much fun. What the hell is going on?